I'm Holly and it's time for a birthday book haul. It was my birthday at the end of June and I ended up acquiring quite a few books. I had some as gifts and then I also went book shopping. The first lot of books I have are the Jane Austen vintage classics. I have wanted these for years, they are stunning. So I have Sense and Sensibility, Northanger Abbey, Persuasion, Emma, Pride and Prejudice and Mansfield Park. These are all stunning additions. The insides are also stunning and the font size is also like quite nice. I feel like a lot of classics have really small font and that makes them almost unreadable. And I am going to be doing a six month project. So I am going to be reading one Jane Austen a month for the rest of the year. In July, I am going to be reading Sense and Sensibility. So if you would also like to read Jane Austen this year, we could just do a very low key read along. I will be reading them. You will hear my thoughts at the end of each month. You can read them and comment or let me know if you have already read these. So the first book I'm going to be reading is Sense and Sensibility. I don't really know too much about this, but but I am sure that I'm going to love Jane Austen. I feel like she is definitely going to be an author that I love, especially after just finishing Bridgerton season two, which was absolutely incredible. I'm hoping that it gives me some of those same vibes. Then the final gift I have was from my uncle. So he is also a very big reader. He actually loves Robin Hobb, who is my favorite author. And this was a bit of a risk, just buying me a book off the cuff, but it ended up being a great decision because the book that he got me was the Atlas Six by Olive Blake. He is very lucky that I hadn't already bought this one because this one is hugely popular on multiple platforms. It was originally self-published and then it became so popular that it was picked up by a traditional publisher. And this follows six magically gifted individuals who are trying to get into the Alexandrian society. Only five can get in, so one of them is not going to make the cut. And I've heard that it's very pretentious, the writing style, and it's very dark academia. It's giving me morally great characters. And those are all things I actually really enjoy. I love the secret history. I've loved a lot of other dark academia that I've read. And I love that this has a magical twist on it. Obviously I love fantasy and I love magic. And my uncle said that he really enjoyed this. He found it very unique and he's very excited for the sequel. And I was going to pick this up eventually, but this has definitely bumped it up on my TBR. And then it's time to get into all the books that I picked up when I went book shopping. I went to the Big Waterstones in Nottingham. It's about an hour away and I haven't been there since before the pandemic. I remember that I went to an Alice Oseman event in February 2020, so right before everything got locked down. And that was the last time that I have been. So I was very, very excited. And because I was so excited, I knew that I could very easily go over the top. And I also wanted to create a bit of a scavenger hunt. I don't know why, I thought it'd be really fun and it ended up being really fun. So I created this bingo board card. The first spot on my scavenger hunt bingo board was a memoir. I have been absolutely loving memoirs recently. And the book that I have picked is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. This is technically not a memoir. I don't think it follows the author's experiences, but it is a biography, so I'm counting it. It's the same kind of thing that I'm looking for. I'm really interested in learning about more people's lives, people who have different lives to me. And the blurb on this, there is no blurb. It says, this is the story of three women. Great. But I have heard fantastic things about this and I love the cover. It definitely intrigued me. And I do think that this one is looking at sex and relationships following these three women. They are three real women and the author spent a lot of time with them, created this almost fictionalized account of these women's lives. I had a little read of the first few pages while I was in the shop and I really like the writing style. So hopefully I end up really enjoying this one. The next spot on my board is translated. I want to be reading more fiction from around the world. I think that's going to be a huge goal next year. So the book that I picked is The Perfect Nine by Googie Wa Tiongo. As well as going to Waterstones, I also went to an independent bookshop in Nottingham called Three Leaves and they have a lot of fiction from around the world and the cover really stood out to me. So this is a retelling of the founding of Kenya's Gakuya people. So it's following these two parents and they 
have nine perfect daughters, the perfect nine, and then a bunch of suitors arrive and they tell the daughters, you can pick your suitors. So they go on this quest to prove the suitors worth and I think it's also to find a cure for their sister. And it is also written in verse, which again stood out. It just seemed like a really interesting pick. It says in the blurb that it blends folklore, mythology and allegory. It's obviously very female driven. Even though I haven't heard anyone talk about this, it just seems like it's going to be an absolutely fantastic read. Then my third prompt was a horror or a spooky book. I really want to dive more into the horror genre. I think it could be something that I love. I love horror films, but I haven't really read many horror books. So the one I've picked up is really popular and that is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This one was really big a few years ago and all I know about the plot of this is that it follows this group of men who 10 years ago killed an elk and now nature is getting revenge on them. But I think that it is going to be very dark, very atmospheric and I have heard great things about this one so I definitely want to see what I think. The next spot on my board was a mum pick. I wanted her to pick a book. She doesn't read that much so it's almost like a random pick but it's very intriguing to see what kind of books stand out and the book that she picked I am so happy she picked because this is one that I have wanted to read for ages and that is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. I heard about this one from Emmy. She is one of my favourite booktubers. She talks about a lot of fiction from around the world and I believe that this one is set in India. It follows these two siblings and this tragedy or something happens and you don't really know what's happened I feel until the end. You're kind of slowly working out what has happened and I've heard that the writing in this is absolutely fantastic. It's lush, it's so vivid and this was the one that my mum picked so even though I didn't pick it I probably would have picked it up eventually and she really wants to read this one too so we're probably going to read this one together. Let me know if you've read this one. I know that it is a bit of a modern classic. The next spot on my board was the maximum 12 books prompt. I knew that going book shopping I could go absolutely over the top and I do actually put a self-imposed limit on me every year which is 60 books. It just helps me to keep my own TBR under control. So I decided that I was going to pick a maximum of 12 books from the bookshops and the these are the books that didn't really fit into any of the other prompts. So the first one I have is 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world by Elif Shafak. This is an author that I have wanted to try for a few years. I actually got another one of their books in a subscription box but the writing in it, the font was just so small it was unreadable to me. So I have been wanting to pick up this author for years and when I saw this one I've heard of it but I didn't actually know the plot and it just sounds incredible. So it looks like this person has died and they've just died. So I'm imagining that they have 10 minutes, 38 seconds before you know they're fully dead. Maybe they could be revived. I don't really know. But it's looking back at this person's life. They're really looking at all the events in their life that really shaped them. And it just sounds incredible. I think it might be set in Turkey. I know that the author is from Turkey and I want to be reading more fiction from around the world, as I've said. And this one just sounds fantastic. My mom also said that she would be interested in reading this one with me. Then I have Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. This is essentially Eurovision in space. Need I say more? I love Eurovision. If this is anywhere close to the wildness that is Eurovision, I'm sure this one is going to be a lot of fun. And then I also have a collection of short stories, which is A Difficult Woman by Roxane Gay. I have read two non-fictions by Roxane Gay and I really love her non-fiction, so I'm intrigued to see what her fiction is like. The next prompt I gave myself was a book that I have never heard about before and actually a lot of the books that I picked up I hadn't heard about before but one that sounds absolutely incredible I'm surprised that it hasn't become more popular and that is By Force Alone by Levi Tidhar. Now this is a retelling of Arthurian legend but it seems like it's twisting it on its head and Arthur is actually the head of these awful people and he's a bit of like a gang leader and it seems like it's very tongue-in-cheek very humorous it says, this is the story of a land neither green nor pleasant, of a legend forged from a pack of self-serving, turd-gilding, weasel-worded lies told to justify foul deeds and ill-gotten gains. This is the story of a dark age myth that shaped a nation. The cover immediately stood out, the plot sounds so fun, 
and I cannot wait to get to this one. The next prompt was something similar to Moon Knight. Now Moon Knight is one of the new Marvel shows on Disney Plus and I am absolutely obsessed. I think it could be my favourite one. It's either that or WandaVision. Both of them are on a path for me. There was something about Moon Knight that just spoke to me and I really wanted to pick something else up. So I could interpret this in various ways, maybe Egyptian mythology or gods or morally grey characters characters, anti-heroes, maybe something to do with mental health because that is a huge theme in the series. But I ended up picking A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. The reason that I picked this one up is because the cover immediately screamed Egypt to me. There's like a scarab beetle and then when I looked on the back it said that it is set in Cairo 1912 so it's perfect. So this one follows this girl who is working in the Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments and Supernatural Entities and then members of of this brotherhood are being murdered and she is put on the case. It sounds a little bit different from Moon Knight, I don't think anything is going to be exactly like Moon Knight, though if you do have any recommendations for other media, whether it be books or TV shows or films that have those same Moon Knight vibes, definitely give me those recommendations. But this one just sounds like it's going to be a bit of a murder mystery, a bit fantasy, a bit spy potentially because she's working in like a government agency. I don't know if there's going to be anything along that lines and hopefully it gives me the same feeling that I had when I watched Moon Knight. Then the next prompt that I set myself was a sequel. I really want to be keeping on top of my series. I'm in the middle of so many. I might do a video at some point going through them. I think I have done that before but it might be nice to do a bit of an update. So I actually have two sequels that I picked up. The first one is Room to Dream by Kelly Yang. This is the third book in the Front Desk series which follows this girl called Mia whose family run a motel and in this one she's actually traveling back to China to see her family so she is an immigrant and that is a huge theme throughout this series and I have just loved these books they've all been so heartwarming but also dealt with some really difficult topics that I think is very important for kids to see whether they can relate to the experiences or whether it can teach them about experiences that they haven't had I just think it is a fantastic series and this is the most recent book that has been published in the UK. Then I have Dreadful Company by Vivian Shaw. This was the sequel to Strange Practice which I read a few months ago and absolutely loved. It really took me by surprise because it follows this woman called Dr Greta Helsing who is the doctor to London's supernatural underworld and it is as fun as you can imagine. There are vampires and ghouls and werewolves and loads of different supernatural creatures and in the first one on, there is almost a murder mystery plot. There are all these murders that seem to be done by monks and it was really dark but also really fun. It was just exactly what I was looking for and in this sequel our main character is going to Paris and it turns out that Paris is infested by a coven of vampires. I love vampires. I'm sure that I'm going to love this one as much as I did the first one. And then the final prompt that I set myself was a bookseller recommendation. This is really pushing me out of my comfort zone because I am incredibly shy, I don't like talking to people in public, but I forced myself to ask the bookseller in Three Leaves, which is the independent bookshop, to give me a recommendation and I essentially said that I wanted something adult, something fiction and something that followed two women in a relationship. And the book that I recommended fit this perfectly because that is When Katie Met Cassidy by Camille Perry. This is exactly what it looks like, this is a romance between two women. One of our women Katie has recently broken up with her fiance and then she runs into Cassidy who kind of changes her entire world and it seems like it's going to be a case of Katie maybe didn't realise that she could have feelings for a woman and it's her exploring that. It just seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. The tagline on the top says tender, sexy as hell and laugh out loud funny which I think is going to be perfect, something very light. It's probably going to be a great read for summer when I just want something quick, something fun, maybe something a bit steamy. It does say it's sexy as hell so we shall see and this was a great recommendation. I've never heard of this book before, I probably wouldn't have picked it up on my own but hopefully it ends up really surprising me and I end up really loving it. So this is my stack of all the books that I got. I can't really hold it, it is leaning, I'm putting it down. Now I know that it was really over the top to do a bingo board but I actually found it really fun and it guided my picks a lot because 
because when I first walked into Waterstones there are so many books and even Five Leaves there were so many books that sounded so good but actually filling in a board made me pick up quite a variety of books. I have some fantasy, some historical, I've got a horror, I've got a memoir. It was just a lot of fun and I definitely recommend giving it a go if you just want something to guide you rather than just being like what on earth do I buy? But yes that's it for my birthday book haul. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and to everyone out there stay curious. Bye!